I know, I know. You're probably sitting there thinking, just by looking at the title of this right here, that, oh, I know where he's going with this. You know, and, uh... <laughs> and, um... And the title of this is a phenomenal thing to ponder. Can Jesus be referred to as an angel? <clears throat> I look at certain topics very carefully. And I look at them very prayerfully and very with deep study. Okay. I want to make things very clear. All right. This isn't a discussion about Michael the Archangel or anything like that. All right. This is just a question of... A phenomenal thing to ponder. Can Jesus be referred to as an angel? Okay. I want to make one thing clear regarding the aspect of Michael. And maybe I might get into a study with that in the near future. Um, there's a lot of debate on that. A lot of people say it's, it's very simple. Michael was a created being, so therefore Michael cannot be Jesus. And there's valid points to that. Okay. Um, you have two different religious sects in today's Christianity that teach this. Um, you have, first and foremost, the Jehovah Witnesses. And a lot of people like to confuse the, the Seventh-day Adventist Church with the Jehovah Witnesses, saying they both believe Michael is Jesus. Okay, And that is true. They both believe Michael is Jesus. I know I'm getting off track, but I just want to make one thing clear. But the Jehovah Witnesses believe that Jesus was a created being. Okay? Because they believe Michael was a created being. On the flip side, the SDA believe that Michael was not a created being. Michael is eternal, so therefore, that's why they claim, they make that claim that Jesus is Michael. Okay? And this this debate goes back and forth all the time. But I do want to make that point clear. A lot of people will lump the SDA. And I, you know, I'm not Seventh-day Adventist, okay? But if people are going to expose something, get the facts right. <laughs> you know, that's what they believe, okay? They don't believe that Michael was a created being like the Jehovah Witnesses do. And I'll be, and if you want, I'll provide you with commentaries that this is not an old doctrine, or this is not a new doctrine at all. A lot of the reformers believed um, Michael was Jesus. Charles Spurgeon believed that Michael was Jesus. Adam Clark, John Gill, Jameson Fawcett and Brown, Matthew Henry, um, you know, all of these older preachers that, and reformers that we talk about so much, they actually believe that Michael was Jesus. And, and there's commentaries to prove it. All you gotta do is ask me to send you some quotes from them and I'll provide them for you. But this isn't a, this isn't the topic of that. Because I know this is gonna come up in the comments. So I just wanted to clear the air with that. What we're doing right now because this is going to be in the context of Revelation chapter 10 and 11. We're not going to read all the chapters, but I want to establish something here. Okay, This is why I'm calling this a phenomenal thing to ponder. Can Jesus be referred to as an angel? Another question, does Jesus receive? Does, does, is, is Jesus considered a redeemer? Easy question to answer. Um, does Jesus accept worship easy question to answer okay so with that in mind let's go ahead and get started we're gonna look at a couple passages in the Old Testament kinda of lay some groundwork here and then we'll look at a couple verses in Revelation chapter 10 and 11 and they go together folks so just kinda of erase the aspect of chapter and verse with those two chapters okay it's very important because it's it's the same context, chapter 10 and chapter 11. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, my, you know, I know there's probably going to be some of you that are going to be like, wow, you're just really going off the deep end here. But, um, you know, this is, it's a phenomenal study. You know, 
And instead of just going out there and saying, oh, well, see, just point out one versus Z. No, it can't be it. Let us look at these things. Let us ponder these things. Be Bereans about these things. And just let's connect some dots, okay? Can Jesus be referred to as an angel? Well, <clears throat> we start off in Malachi 3.1, which states, Behold, I will send my messenger... And he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant. There's the word messenger again. Messenger of the covenant. Which covenant are we talking about? New covenant, perhaps? Whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Okay. So here... <clears throat> God basically says he will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me and this messenger is the messenger of the covenant so you cannot confuse this with John the Baptist okay this is clearly talking about a prophecy regarding Jesus Christ now when you look at this word messenger all right when you look at this word messenger in uh, Strong's H4397 it can mean a messenger, representative, a messenger, or an angel, or the theophanic angel. I'm going to look at what theophanic angel means, but maybe if someone can do that for me, I didn't take the time to <laughs> look up that word theophanic angel, but, um, but it's right there. So this right here, pretty much spells it out for me that Jesus can be referred to as an angel because the word angel and messenger are synonymous. They go hand in hand. That's what technically an angel is, is a messenger. And here God is calling, well essentially in the New Testament we refer to him as Jesus, the messenger of the covenant. Whom ye delight in, behold he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, I did a little bit of digging, I dug up some verses that this same word appears in. H4397, Malak, okay, which can be referred to as angel. And this same word is used as the word angel a hundred times. Um, and so I just, I mean, I didn't pick out all hundred verses, I just picked out a few of them. All of them are pretty interesting when you really dive down and look at it. But I just picked out a few of them, and we're going to go over them. <clears throat> and I want you to really listen carefully here. In Genesis 48, 16, very strong significance that this, for, that, that this one right here is capitalized. The angel which redeemed me. Now, who redeems? No created angel can redeem anybody. All right, I want to make that clear no created angel can redeem anybody the only one that can redeem is the Redeemer and that's Jesus Christ himself the angel which redeemed me from all evil bless the lads and let my name be named on them and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth okay in Judges chapter 2 verse 1 it's not capitalized but just listen very carefully listen to the wording and an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim and said I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers and I said I will never break my covenant with you so this angel obviously made a covenant with the fathers this angel brought them up out of the land of Egypt and brought them into the land which I swear unto your fathers now wasn't that something that God did but yet here it's just an angel really think about it Judges 6.11 and 6.12 again this is the same word that is used in Malachi 3.1 
And there came an angel of the Lord, and sat under an oak, which was an Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash the Ebezrite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. <clears throat> and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. So here the angel of the Lord seems to me that he is referring to himself as the Lord when he states, The Lord is with thee. There's also verses in, in Genesis where it talks about uh, um, when Jacob was uh, wrestling with the angel. And um, after that was done, he went, he went along and said, I have seen God face to face. Now we know that is impossible to see God face to face, but what if he manifested himself as an angel? Then it would be possible to see God face to face. All you got to do is read about Moses. He could only see the back. Okay. So, I mean, this is... These are some very unique mysteries here. But if you really look at some of these verses very carefully... It almost seems like it's obvious that, yes, Jesus, the Son of God, the Word made flesh, can be referred to as an angel. All right? Just by these few verses here, I stated alone. This isn't me agreeing with any specific doctrine or of any denomination. This is just simply me providing you with a study. Okay? Because of what I have picked up from other denominations and these types of things. They may have leave, they may leave some stuff out. But that's where you, as a Berean, take what they are giving you and you research it. Rather, you're exposing an error or rather you're trying to, you know, proclaim truth. Okay? That's why you listen to these people and you have a Bible in your hand so you can study along with them to see rather things be so, rather things be not so. And you'll have some teachers that say, you know, that, that will be proclaiming truth but at the same time they might have something wrong doesn't mean they're bad people you know it's just if you take the time to study you might be able to point some of these things out so with these verses here and you go back to Malachi 3 1 when it talks about the messenger it seems obvious to me that yes Jesus can be, re be referred to as an angel now we're gonna go a little bit out of context here and we're going to look at another phrase here. We're going to look at another word. And it's the word captain. Okay? I want you to pay very close attention to this, uh, to these three verses. Joshua 5, 13, 14, and 15. Okay? And it states, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes, and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him, and said unto him, Art thou for us, or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord. So captain of the Lord's host. Okay, so this person, this being, whatever it is, is the head of the host of the Lord. Am I now come? Now pay attention here. And I'm going to give you a snippet of the, rev of the revelation of Jesus Christ. When John fell at his feet to worship one of the angels, and it's not the same angel that's in Revelation chapter 10 and chapter 11. But there was an angel speaking unto John. John went to worship, fall down and worship him. And, he, and the angel right away told John, Don't worship me, I am your fellow companion. Okay? So, God's angels specifically know that men are not supposed to worship them. I want you to pay very close attention here. And the host of the Lord in the Old Testament is can be referenced as angels. All right. Now, but as captain of the host of the Lord, pay attention here. Am I now come? 
And Joshua fell on his face to the earth, just like John did, and did worship, and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? Pay very close attention. And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoes from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Did this captain of the Lord's host, which is an angel, by the way, um, tell Joshua not to worship him? He did not. He did not. I'll read it again. And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. This angel did not say, Up on your feet, you are not to worship me. Like the one angel that spoke to John in the Revelation. Let's look at the word captain. Okay. The word captain comes from Strong's H8269, which can mean prince, this prince of peace, ring a bell, ruler, leader, chief. And a very, very interesting word there chief, chieftain, official, and captain. It can be a patron or angel. Elders are representative leaders of people, heads or princes of religious office. Um, captain, general, commander, you know, all these other titles and these types of things. But the main core definition is prince, ruler, leader, chief, chieftain, official, captain. Let's look at chief. And let's go to a word, the word archangel. Okay, archangel. Now... Again, I'm not coming into any conclusions here yet, but what I will say is that the term archangel does not refer to Gabriel at all, does not refer to any other angel except Michael. Except Michael. And that's it. So Michael is the only archangel, and the word archangel simply means chief of, or head of, or ruler of. Now, question. If you created something, wouldn't you be the head of what you created? If you created an army, wouldn't you be, be the head of that army? Is this something I want you, you know, just something to ponder? That's all I'm asking is just ponder it. You know, hear the whole conclusion of the matter. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm asking. Okay, so if you created something, wouldn't you be the head of it? Obviously, yes. So wouldn't you be the chief of it? The captain of it? Folks, this, this word archangel, which means chief of the angels, or, you know, when you take the word angel out and you just look at the word arc, it means chief or ruler or master. I'll pull it up for you right now. 757, if you can read it right there, to be first in political rank or power, reign or rule over. Okay? It's just something to think about. So this word archangel corresponds with captain, which corresponds with captain of the host of the Lord, which this captain of the host of the Lord did not deny Joshua worship to him. Did not tell Joshua to stand up. Did not tell Joshua to don't, to, did not say to Joshua, don't worship me. Like the one angel that told John. Now, Revelation 10 and 11 does go together, okay? And I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to read the whole chapters because, you know, I'm kind of, I guess you can kind of look at this as a series of, like, 
the word witnesses and two witnesses and stuff like that because I've been kind of on this trail here for a couple of weeks. But I want you to really pay attention here, okay? We're gonna read a we're gonna read the first first the first six verses in Revelation chapter ten, and I saw another mighty angel, not just an angel, but another mighty angel, come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. Question. What was the everlasting covenant that was made with Noah? Wasn't it a rainbow? And didn't God promise Noah with this rainbow that he would not destroy the earth again with the flood? And here is this rainbow upon this mighty angel's head. And his face was, as it were, the sun. Now, you can't look directly at the sun now, can't you? And his feet as pillars of fire. So this is a very unique angel. Unique like no other angel. I'm not saying that this angel is Jesus, but it sure seems very close. And he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his right foot upon the sea. What does the sea represent? Nations, multitude, kindreds, tongues, peoples, a very populated area. And his left foot on the earth, which can be maybe a not so populated area and these types of things. And cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. <laughs> now, the seven thunders are very unique, okay? Because these seven thunders, you don't hear about them at all, except right here in the book of Revelation. You hear about trumpets, bowls, and um, plagues, vials, and these types of things. But this is all you hear about these seven thunders. So, And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those sayings which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven, now you might say right here, well, see, this can't be Jesus because here he's he's pleading to God. He's pleading to, you know, Jehovah, you know, these types of things. But, you know, let's hold on a second and swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created heaven and the things that are therein are and the earth and the things that therein are and the sea and the things which are therein that there should be time no longer. Now, right there, you can just stop and say, well, see, you, your your whole study is just blown. Not necessarily, because all you got to do is go to the very first chapter in Genesis. In the creation of man, what did God say? Genesis 1, 26 and 27. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them you can even go to john 1 1 and 1 3 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god with god and the word was god so at the same time, the word was with God and the word was God. Very, very confusing, but at the, but it's what it says. And you have let us make man in our image after our likeness. Okay, these are pluralistic terms here. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. So is it possible that this angel here in Revelation chapter 10 is Jesus? Very possible. You cannot say no. You can't really technically say no in the context of Re Revelation chapter 10. And this same angel had something very interesting to say in Revelation chapter 11. And I will close with this. The first three verses. There was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood. The same angel that, is, that was, just, was just referenced in Revelation chapter 10. Okay, just take out the chapters and just read it together. 
And it was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto what? My two witnesses. So whose two witnesses? The angel's two witnesses. I thought these were God's two witnesses. Well, here the angel is speaking, and the angel said, no, these are his two witnesses. So could it very well be that this mighty angel is, in fact, Jesus Christ, God himself? <laughs> Sounds like a very strong, plausible argument to me. My two witnesses? Angel? I mean, the angel stood saying that these are his two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three, store, three score days clothed in sackcloth. So can you honestly, honestly, just right away say no to the question, can Jesus be referred to as an angel? I don't think you can. Now I know these verses actually give you, might give you a lot to think about, might give you a lot to study and read up on. You know, I, 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 you know, I've been, I, I've been looking at this topic for quite a while because it, it, it just fascinates me, you know, um, and it, it's, it's, it's a very fascinating study. It really is because it's, it's something that, um, a lot of people are just afraid, not really afraid, but are, are very nervous to touch. Sincerely nervous because they don't want to, um, they don't want to, they don't want to deceive anybody. I don't want to deceive anybody. Well, so, I mean, the, the, I, I, I couldn't even come up with these verses myself if, you know, if I wasn't asking guidance for it. You know, but, so yeah, I mean, this is a very nerve-wracking thing. You know, it is a phenomenal thing to ponder. But, I mean, it is what it is. You know, you can't just simply say no without hearing the whole conclusion because there is a lot to dig up with this specific study. And all I'm doing is because I looked at the aspect of the beginning verses of chapter 11 and I saw my angel and I saw my two witnesses and you look at that very close that the angel is saying that that's his two witnesses. And then you automatically got to think to yourself, well, I thought those were God's two witnesses because an angel can't be God because an angel is a created being, right? Well, all you got to do is just look at Malachi 3.1. An angel can mean a messenger. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, say the Lord of hosts. And that is strictly about the Messiah. It cannot be about anybody else. And the word messenger can be simply referred to as angel. And I went over all these other verses. There's plenty more. So. So really, I mean, my. The, the, the thing that I will do to you, you know, do is. Uh, what I would do is I would just pause this video a lot. Look at the verses, write them down. And again, if you want me to send you the commentaries of what some of these older um, commentary individuals, like these reformers, Clark and whatnot, had to say about Michael, just to kind of clear the air a little bit, that this is just a Seventh-day Adventist thing or just a Jehovah Witnesses thing, um, I will be happy to send those to you. Of what they had to say about this specific name and what it meant to them. 
okay and these are people that you know a lot of people today are you know consider them great preachers of their day like I said Spurgeon believed it Matthew Henry believed it Adam Clark John Gill uh, Wesley okay so Luther John Knox Waldenses I mean they all looked at the aspect that yeah Jesus can be referred to as an angel and they specifically pointed it out as Michael <laughs> um, so but again this was not really a study about Michael you know that could be a very that could be in a very near future study but I just wanted to point out the aspect of really uh, Revelation chapter 10 and 11 and the description of that specific angel which is the same angel that is in Revelation chapter 11 um, is very unique and it's something that I think we should ponder and search out be the Bereans see if these things are so truth be told truth be known stay safe God bless we'll see you next time bye bye